Uncle Lionel's generation respected this tool and used this particular tool to tell that particular story uh, of forced removals in uh, the 50s, right, of apartheid. Uh, I, I, I'll go on a bit long, but if you understand the principle of land and how Uncle Lionel was passionate about land from Vukani onwards, right, from 60s and what inspired them on the African continent. You look at what was happening in uh, the US at that particular time. You look at what was happening in the former French uh, colonies, right? It was the era just uh, post-independence, uh, uh, 50s, uh, 60s. So that's what inspired them. And that's what that's a story that uh, they wanted to tell. Um, the challenge though becomes that in South Africa that kind of content gets banned. You can never show any of Uncle Lionel's films. The films that are only allowed to be shown in South Africa become all of the black exploitation films, right? All of the horrible films, Money Whoever and all of those. And our filmmakers end up in exile or having to tell their story. Take just a photographer that used to stay also just up this road, Peter Maguban, ending up having to put his camera inside a loaf of bread to be able to get the shots uh, that he needs to make. So filmmakers are inspired by their environment, by their society over a period of time. And they produce films for different reasons. I think that over the last 50 to 60 years of South African cinema, of African cinema, there remains a group of filmmakers that remain inspired by that original vision. 